Hey everyone, welcome out to our official Orc Codex review. Right? Oh. Better late than never, I guess. i uh, got <laughs> Mark Perry with me here today. Of course, I am Hosen. Uh, and we're going to take you through the, the very basics of what this book means and then kind of share with you how we feel about the book. So what's your, what's your initial hot take? My hot take right off the bat is that this book has a lot of depth and options of play, which makes me excited because like, I'm a guy who's nonstop tinkering with lists. True. And this book has an endless amount of different directions I can go with tinkering. So if you're someone that enjoys the list building phase and just coming up with theories and ideas, this book will probably be a pretty like, honestly, it's probably the most depth co codex that we've gotten in a, like probably possibly ever uh, with the different lines of play that are more or less viable at a, you know, everywhere from a B level to an A level. Like I think they have a lot of options. And we've got, I mean, to your point there, you've got uh, on the surface, what looks like an obvious way to run it. You know, yep. I'm gonna fill it with knobs and war bosses for, for bully, for bully boys, boys or whatever. Um, but there's a lot of like really good toolkit units that are in the yep. book that are gonna find your way into lists that don't necessarily support them. I mm -hmm. know that we saw a dread mob yesterday with uh, Ludas and yep. flash kits and you know, they did work, yep. right? Oh, that's I say that's one of the things that goes with it is like you have the option to take a really skewed you know the attachment just skew down that detachment's route and its line of play but then you could pull it back and really kind of focus the attachment rules on a few of the core of your army and then the rest of it you can fill out with stuff that normally doesn't have so much attachment but those data sheets are still very good that allow you to better play the game and set up like i'm working on uh you know something that was an old pack for me it was like i call it my golf box which was like a, a utility goth army where it wasn't quite as aggro but it had a lot of utility where i can play a lot of different games and now i'm just calling it boy box because it's it's the detachment and uh but that's got the uh, loot is in it it's as uh, so that one's not the, that no one's what the command kit. does and oh, sometimes yeah. some uh some flash kits i want to death there's, dreads with score death dreads. right there's a lot of options to play in there to help bring up some of your weaknesses if you want to play that utility type work army uh where you can just take good stuff and just play good 40k and you have that option to play skew, good 40k, janky style from like the speed freaks gives a lot of options for that. I think the um, the big hunt has a lot of potential long term as a detachment where initially it's not as big, but like you want all four of those enhancements and you can't have all four of those enhancements. And that, that's sad. That's um, awesome. And all those shots and those uh, army rule is super good. Um, like I just, there's a lot of depth of play for that attachment in that way. Yeah, and we're going to get into more of that in a in a moment with each of the code, or the, each of the detachments, if you will, mm -hmm. and kind of see, you know, kind of what their best uh, outcomes are, what the meta is going to look like to put them yep. on the table. Um, but let's kick it off from the top. Of course, the army rule hasn't changed. Nope. Right. The army rule is, you know, one turn of wog, five up invul plus one strength, plus one attack yep. on that wog turn. So let's actually just go ahead and jump right into some of the codex, uh, codex specific detachments, and we'll take it from there. All right, kicking off the new detachments um, is just basically the, the renamed detachment from yep. the index, and that's, that's Warhorde. And I think the Warhorde is a such better name than Wild Tribe. Like, I, I agree. It's, it's such a good, cool name. Wild, Wild Tribe, Tribe is a little uninspired. Yeah, you know? yeah. But um, what can you tell us about Warhorde? Um, Honestly, I think Warhorde, if you're coming over and you haven't quite, you don't have a direction in your mind of like how to play with the new detachments, just click, stick to Warhorde. Mm -hmm. As you learn out the other ones, you have more time to practice out. The Warhorde is still really strong and flexible. Right. Uh, really the good. The paint isn't good. The strats are all good. The enhancements are great. And I think it only helps out with some of the units that definitely got a facelift in the balance slate. Like Flash gets went down. Now you're not taking them a bad rope. Yes, five man squads are great. Storm Rushers at 80 points. You know, they're just a little Marine squad rapidly. Beat up over Marines. Cool. Uh, that's, a, units, that's a good point. Yeah, burners are very handy in there. And then some of these otter units get some good utility here because all the strats affect them. And um, and the basic sustained hits just brings up the power of all those units. So if you want to play somewhere where you have a wide range of collection, this is a good detachment where if you don't have a hard style that you want to focus on. If you don't have a design of like, I'm trying to play every single game of 40k as a self, or more is consistent and it will be the right. detachment you want to take still. It's really well rounded. You've yeah. got, you can build uh, kind of to to your particular flavor or play flavor. style. Yep. And then all of the stratagems really can support everything. You don't exactly. have things pigeonholed, pigeonholed into have to be boys yep. or have to be a war boss. So it definitely lets you play with more of your collection in a, not so much a generic way, but 
you know, kind of. You a don't have to have a cohesive strategy right. coming from your detachment. You can just all your units are going to do something, which are, is cool. Are there any big wins in terms of the Codex with the War Horde right now? Um, uh, I mean, I'll put like I'll say that I, I believe that the Squig Hog Boys. Yeah. Getting the knob on Smash and the squad, yep. being those ablative wounds for the beast boss. Um, I feel like they actually look really good in the world. Still yep. being able to push your minus one to wound on them, making them that much tougher, and uh, you know, being the able to. Sustain hits is huge in that unit, and also like yeah. the enhancements. Like also like now you can put the devastating wounds on a beast boss, and he doesn't have to worry about getting solely focused out. You can hide him in that Squid Talk Boy unit, and then he's going to deliver a lot more damage across the game. He's right, heavy tanks. Right. If if you lose if you lose a couple of bodies on your way in, you know, yep. you're really about getting the beast boss there. Yeah. And the inclusion of the knob is really interesting, right? Because it gives a breakpoint for those ablative wounds. Or if you're hitting me with mm -hmm. three damage attacks, it's not just going to kill that squig hog anymore right. now i do have the opportunity to shrug one or two of those by soaking them into a four wound knob yeah. as a part of that unit so yeah. i think that they're a big win uh for that detachment mm -hmm. um but definitely worth checking out yep oh uh, what's going for like strats honestly this thing is all pretty much the same i think mob rule is yeah mob rule is the only one i believe had a change other than our is what doesn't affect monsters anymore. So no more of this biggin. That is um, that is a little sad. Yeah. I will tell you, you know, we did get that stream uh, yep. game the other night with the Squiggith, the last uh, index stream. Um, but it it no longer being able yeah, to be the uh, the recipient of that minus one to wound definitely feels a little definitely bit. puts it back on the shelf so for yeah. quite some time. But I think mob rules of stratagem is definitely one thing because like one of the biggest add-ons to this codex is getting sticky just on boys. Now you want to take boys, and on top of that. Because uh, the sticky objectives, um, but also when you have the mob rule strategy in this attachment, that also like you could fail, you could just take your battle shocks and you're like, oh, I failed this critical one, I didn't have to race the CP on it because uh, I don't want to auto pass it because now I can roll it, use this stratagem to just say, I ignore that, right? No longer battle shock and so forth. I think that's a very um, like coming, coming as a sleeper utility piece that will catch. Um, a lot of people are like, I'm like, okay, you feel this key battle shock. I'm like, I have a way to get past that, right? I'm not crippled only by a bad dice roll. Uh, it is super situational. You're you're not going to have every right. game that you're going to have a great opportunity for mob rule, right? But that's the case with with a lot of these stratagems, mm -hmm. things like Kareen, uh, unchanged. Well, that only matters if you happen to explode, yep. which. We could have seen a lot of careening last night. Yeah. We could have. Uh, but that's like, that's a very situational thing. Mm -hmm. You might have one in three, one in five games that you actually have an opportunity to spend that CP. And so it, it can't really also make its way into your CP uh, economy right, man. either. Yeah. You, can't, you can't budget that as, I need to keep my CP for careen, especially when you've got things like, you know, your, uh, your fight on deaths, mm -hmm. right? Um, a lot more of your... Uh, the rapid ingress is something right. that you're going to be doing a lot of. So it's going to be if you have the extra CP and it's a benefit. And I believe that's the same way with mob rule. Yeah. Uh, something you can go with that for like opportunity cost to go with the flexibility for a warlord. That's one of the nice things when you have mob rule, but it's a utility strat. Green is always an opportunity strat. Right. Um, when you're planning against shooting matchups, what happens when I said earlier where you got this flexible play style and you can play the way you want to play and uh, you know, bottleneck for one strategy. Kareen always tells shooting armies, hey, look, there's an opportunity where if you kill my transport, I'm going to get a full move. I'm going to get all these guys out. And your whole game plan is not set. You know, their, their, their game plan cannot fully plan for that because it's if you try to stop the Kareen from even happening, that means they you know, full, you know, sacrifice a bunch of you know, units of screen that you can right. move over. Uh, so that means they have to put extra layers behind it. Uh, or sometimes they just shoot you and you just move your full thing, get all of your mega knobs out of the battle wagon behind a ruin in front of their army behind a wall. There's that. Exactly. And... You post yourself up in a situation where on your reprisal the following turn, yes. you're disembarking and not taking any additional shooting right. that phase. That's, I think, one of the big... It's, the big it's, it's all about the taking that flexibility of detachment and opportunity. Right. But I think we've had enough of this attachment. It's already been played a lot, and it's had a lot of success. Sure. Um, And it's, you know, it's still just great. It's If you just want to play basic orcs with a wide range of models, not going down a basic strategy, if it's, it's just it's good. It'll definitely get some play. Yeah. It definitely will. Yeah. All right. Next up is the big hunt, and I'm uh, particularly excited about this one. I'm a big fan of Beast Snaggas, uh, the model, the aesthetic, right? The extra kind of tough boy, if you will. Um, so I'm pretty excited about this one myself. Brings us four new Warlord traits, brings us six new stratagems. So what have you got for me about the big hunt, Mark? 
So when it comes to the big hunt, the rule is so strong based off the right off the bat. Okay, it's an over the moment style ability where you just pick something at the start of your command phase, and the big thing about that is you're able to your opponent can react and do their turn, and you're like, okay, I got these plays, I can do these plays, I can calculate this, focus mm -hmm. on this. It also makes a lot of these units vets do a decent little bit of damage when they are really hyper focused on one thing. Also, they just they get the extra spike reroll charges, right. amazing thing. Or she's have that army wide and that was a big sink for us and we lost that in this edition. Now having that where we can target on one spot, super good. And there's a lot of vehicles in this edition. This is a very vehicle heavy edition. Right. So you constantly have a place for that. And so and, the thing to know here, of course, is that yeah. you pick your prey and yep. you say, all right, that warlord, that vehicle, that monster, you know, screw him we'll in particularly. Him we're going to go after him. He's and the in doing so, you get extra bonuses for this. Yes. You get your... You get reroll re charges, and you get plus one AP. Plus one AP. Actually, and better than yeah. plus one to hit when you think about the vacancy of AP in our codex. And, and the right? codex, and a lot of AP. One at Ormer Contempt gets around those. Definitely those Space Marine tanks or vehicles that are looking at you at the front, and you're like, oh, yeah, you just got two-up saved, and you got Armor Contempt. I'm going to put you on two-ups. That feels kind of bad. Right. But now, all of a sudden, you have AP, too, so you're forcing free-ups. Beast Naga Boys add a lot more value with the extra AP uh, with that full reroll hits a wound, or right. reroll, reroll hits and that wounds. And I think that just like, that makes you want to take at least Freddy B Snagger Boys starting off, maybe more. Like I can make an argument for having someone just pain bosses in them, uh, not just triple war bosses. And that's a big thing that we got with this codex with the new points, is the beast boss went back from, you know, we got nerfed to 100 points and he went back down to 80. And right. that's just, it's hard not to take free of him in that scene because he's such a good character. Especially when character. it comes to vehicle. You combine yep. his abilities with the prey ability and he becomes very lethal, yeah. right? Yep. Um, a big thing to note about this is the utility of the prey. You've mm -hmm. got one unit that you're gonna get these buffs on and become more efficient in yep. killing that one unit, but it's got an impact on the table, right? Yep. The, the advantages that you get to your charging, augmented charges, allows you to take your, pr your prey model or, or unit as it were, and use it as a bit of a slingshot to get you into other combats mm -hmm. that might be harder charges, right? So you can take your nine inch coming out of reserve, right? And have your prey as a part of it and be able to target multiple units with potentially a seven inch charge based on where they're at. So the uppy downy with the B snaga and creating those opportunities, I think is gonna have the some- The stratagems have a good... lot of opportunity costs and a lot of great synergies with the Dachshund. But the, I think the main thing is, you know, the army rule is amazing. This is a really, like, I would definitely put it as, like, an A-tier detachment rule. Uh, it's not an S-tier, but it has, you know, if you can utilize it, it has a high ceiling for skill. There's a lot of things that you want to master with this detachment. But the thing that I think as a whole is probably the best enhancement tree I've ever seen in my life. This is yeah. the, like, four for four. You want to take every single one of them, and you're not allowed to. Right, um, and with that, you do have some that are going to shine a, few, a bit more than others. But let's right. let's talk about those enhancements yep. just very briefly. Uh, you've got Glory Hog, of course, off the rip, and that's going to get your your pack of of uh, Swig Beast, Hog Swig boys, boys. Right, that's going to get them a nine inch scout move. Yeah, to really push either a push a lot of pressure on a go first turn, right, mm -hmm. or b uh, you know kind of a draw play where yep. you deploy them out, they set up their army to strike and then you pull them yep. into another direction to kind of change yep. the landscape. It's either, you know, you go second, you scout move up, they pull back, because they went first, or you go first and you just have this wide opener where this unit without the wall just goes 19 inches, and with the reroll charge from the big hunt, you just have a great opener right there to get that pace going, allow all the rest of the units to follow up. Right. Um, it has a very similar thing to the uh, truck boy tempo uh, that ninth edition had mm. uh, when kind of get that first turn, like come in there with the first hit and then just keep going uh, for the first three turns. And I think that's something that, as an opener, that is not something that you see too much of this at the moment. There's not a lot of crazy openers uh, in 40k at the moment. The game is very much like move up with your army, get in position, and not just I'm in your deployment zone as hard turn one. Um, and this book definitely is going to show more of that off. Uh, with all these random abilities and units that can do it across the book.
It also brings some good synergies. We talk yeah. about units that are, are in a uh, list that don't necessarily benefit from that. This is a really good synergy with a, a commando squad that mm -hmm. you can get your pre-deployment, you can lay claim to that space that you want to pre-game move to prevent other things from dropping down yep. and interfering. And then you've also got that extra push. If, if you've yep. got the, uh, an advantageous uh, situation for performing that turn one wog and pushing in, you've got the commandos that are able to execute, you've got those squig hogs off that nine inch scout move mm -hmm. they're going to get where they want to get and yep. allow you to you know kind of buy time to develop the rest of your board as well and something else that goes with that with that strategy is that's where you're like pushing out and figuring out like what's the more extreme like let's go first scout moves you have the commandos that take up all the board space it locks down people's other infiltrates right. and their scout moves it allows yours to get up and then it also synergizes really well with a unit that i think should see more play uh, and then some detachments is really whack, but in this one is definitely where you have Zagrod Snaga with his 20 yeah. Gretchen, where they get Scout 9, so they keep up with the Squig Hogs. You call that wall, they're going extra 6-inch movement, so they're going 21 with Advance and Charge. Uh, so at least 22 to up to 27 inches, turn 1 on that Advance. And they might be T2, but if you put 21 models out uh, there. They're minus 1 to wound, like a 5-up in Voln with the wall, and Zagrod just goes around whack, whack, whack. And I mean, he's got a Power Claw. Yep. You know, he's, he's got a power claw. He's and... going to do some work, and that's a hell of a lot of ablative wounds that can stretch a, a very large footprint. Mm -hmm. So what's your favorite of these um, enhancements yourself? So really, I think Propakilla is the biggest one for me. Okay. Because it, plus one damage. Plus one damage is just an amazing thing. Uh, and getting that damage free on some of these beast stack units is massive. Mm -hmm. Beast bosses having free damage on their choppers. And their beast choppers but against vehicles, those heavier tanks where they're just taking dev wounds at free damage. Huge for dropping hard targets, right? You can't, your opponent can never sit there and let that one war boss say, that's not a threat. I think I can, you know, like if they have the right target for targets, they 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 got to kill that squad immediately. Right. And you can lean into that by like threatening people with it or just waiting until the opponent where they can connect and your opponent can't stop them from connecting again the following turn. That's right. Um, I think that unit, honestly, I do like one, one hunter rig. With 20 Beast Snack Boys, with the Beast Boss, with Prop Killer, for he has an extra 20 Ablated Wounds because he will go through units every turn on by himself. Uh, there's definitely no better detachment for the Hunter Rig with the uh, one of the data sheet changes for that, yep. getting the extra attacks based off of having transported models. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, Weight of Dice is really nice for applying attacks, but as we talked about the issue with AP, that Hunter Rig loaded up with boys attacking a prey target, that... That's a, a high volume of attacks that yep. all of a sudden become pretty lethal. Yeah. Um, so Scrag Every Stash is a really good utility piece just for staking objectives and keeping those assets that you have on the table moving forward and performing roles other than babysitting. Right. right? The sticky objectives and orcs are so big because as they're pushing out, holy stuff, I already talked about the boys earlier, this allows Squeak Hog boys to be sticky, which allows, you know, that's just, it's just, it's such a good role. And when you want probably like two to three, at least uh, four-man squads of Squid Card Boys with Beast Boss. I could see the argument for the bigger, like, full-on nine-man squad. I don't like that because, like, I'm a much more MSU. I have, like, lots of resources on orcs. Um, definitely, if you're building teams, you can just go extra unga bunga down, take all of it, um, and really disrespect your opponent. <laughs> and, it, and it can pair pretty well with the nine-inch scout move. Yeah. Um, if you've got the opportunity to open up that field early, and yeah. then people come in yep. behind them. You're able to establish that sticky because mm -hmm. the every unit's right up in your opponent's business, and they're like, I got to deal with this unit. I, don't have, I can't deal with both right. units. Uh, and then, of course, Surly is a squigget. Yep. It's a never good unit. If you're taking that triple one, you definitely like, can see the argument of taking it because like, it's just minus one to wound. Again, I think this is my fourth. I think this is the one I wouldn't take. Um, because the minus one to wound is is great at times, but also sometimes just not needed. Well, and this minus one is actually just got the caveat of yeah. that that strength has to be greater than greater. your toughness, which means you're not going to be able to use the plus one to wound in this scenario mm -hmm. to push yourself to a a six to wound. right. It doesn't protect it's you from the small arms. Basically, cap you to four, right? It, yeah. It's a protector to make sure that you never exceed yep. uh, a four or better on that wound phase. Yeah. So, um, and it's not bad. But I, I think that of the three that we mentioned, probably has the least value coming out of the coming yeah. out of the gates. Yeah. Right. Um, couple of fun stratagems here, Definitely. and then of course the uh, we talked about the sustained and how valuable it is on Squig Hog boys. Well, yep. you've got drag it down. It's going to allow you to take a unit and drop sustained on it as well to increase the the efficacy of those attacks. Yeah, and definitely with that, like bring that extra damage and potential 
uh, detachment that already has that plus one AP, sustainable plus one AP. All of a sudden, you're just war whore, but better in certain conditions. Right. I think the biggest thing for really detaching right here is there's two strats. One, you get to do mortal wounds on the impact, coming from unstoppable momentum. They're really good. Uh, that's just what, like, 10 boys come in, there's just like roll 10 dice, take six mortal wounds, and be happy. Um, combine that with grenades, tank shocks. All of a sudden, there's a lot of tough units that are just dropping really quickly. Uh, and But I think the biggest thing for control, this is what adds that flexibility. You're seeing all this extra stuff where it has a really powerful tempo pushes, it has sticky, uh, it has the high damage output, but it's, you know, then you're like, okay, well, it happens when they just like plan high, they're casting really well, and you're just not able to break it. You have extinctive hunters. This allows you to pull a unit off board and put in reserves. You can do this turn one, you can do this um, turn five. You have so many different options of play. Uh, really going with this detachment because you don't have to bring it on immediately. You can put it in reserve turn one and just rapid ingress it in turn four. Um, and there's a lot of opportunity cost with this one. Definitely with these melee units that you know were playing for that late turn because you just can't crack the castle, so you can just wait. You can turn a little cunning and be more brutal afterwards. Right. Um, and that's just you're pulling off boards. It's one of the best abilities for this edition. And it is non predictable mobility, yeah. right? It's the ability to, uh, again, force your opponent to respect all of the table edges. Um, otherwise, you've got a dude in your backfield that could end up in their backfield mm -hmm. late game. So that, those are always, we're, and we're seeing it, the, the uppy downy thing, we're seeing that very common among a lot of armies. Uh, and I think it's a good place for yep. it here. Next up. Cult of Speed. Now, this is one I'm excited for, not necessarily because of the strength of the build, but because, you know, I like buggies, and 9th Edition uh, had some pretty fun buggy play, and it died yep. when that index came out. Those data sheets were nerfed with volume being replaced with twin link, and, you know, the inability... The lack of minus one damage from Ramtrack will make me, like, they oh, just melted so oh, much faster. It hurts my heart. Like, why are you bringing up old stuff, Mark? That's, a, <laughs> you know, trauma trauma here but that's the big thing that i saw uh playing into it we had a a christmas game that was just a fun game uh i take that back it was a doubles game let's let's <laughs> roll, let's roll the whole thing back okay okay so next up is cult of speed now i'm excited for this one not so much because of how killy or how uh competitive the list is but because you get to put buggies on the table and have a good time with them Right. I'm a big fan of buggies, had a lot of fun with the Army of Renown in ninth edition, and it hurt my soul yep. when the index came out and the shot volumes were neutered, they replaced with twin link. Um, so it's good to see these guys back. Getting the ability to advance and shoot uh, makes some really valuable threats on the table, the mm -hmm. shock jump and its ability to assassinate yep. potential. Uh, those, are, uh, those are bringing a lot of value to it. Every time you have to worry about when playing against the storm, you have triple shot jugs. All of a sudden, they're they, they get fixed by this attachment. Where are they going to teleport? Are they going to shoot you? What well, precision? Uh, crazy guns, dab wounds, at D6 plus one damage, at AP three. I want to say maybe two. Uh, it used to be four. I remember being five. I'm like, oh, this used to be one of my favorite guns. <laughs> but um, with all those extra opportunities, because you can get lethal, sustain twos. Right. You have a lot of potential. Of, if your opponent are making mistakes and they're not quite sure how to play against you, uh, and they don't have a lot of experience at singles, you can play a lot of jank and your opponent is like, you just have non-stop plays. Uh, and as the opportunist uh, strategy, what follows, I would say, is the back muscle of this build would be taking advantage of fast venues, getting out as a pseudo truck boy where you can move a transport and then get out and in charge. The trolleys can't... Um, get out and move, right? which means that like, you know, battle wagons will be 10, you're getting out free. So it's like a 13 inch move. You turn a lot of your infantry base units into um, storm boys almost like. But um, it gives a very, uh, very tactical or, or tactile threat for the tabletop yes. by having the bodies that can get onto mm -hmm. those objectives and play the game and free up your big bases for your, your vehicles yep. to go do the, the mid board harassing or the, 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 right. the backfield uh, assassination attempts and whatnot. Uh, faster than use definitely, I think is probably the one must have in yeah. this build i think if you're playing this attachment you're actually really playing with this attachment with all the extra jank this is a solid core of a strategy that you can build with this enhancement alone and everything else is just trying to help and support and take advantage of the right. board state that you can make 
with this enhancement. And it's a great example of what we were talking about earlier, about having units that are toolbox units that come into the detachments that don't benefit from the mm -hmm. detachment. You yep. know, whatever boys have the, have the war boss with faster than use, they're not, they're not getting the advance and shoot like those buggies do. Yep. But the value that that warlord trait brings, you know, kind of makes room for them in the detachment. Right. I think two ways to build this as a whole, to give an example of what that unit looks like, you have two big units that you can take advantage of. Take a battle wagon, put uh, six megadobs in a character in there with faster. Mm -hmm. That's, and you rapid ingress this battle wagon. So you oh, rapid yeah. ingress off of a battle flank, it's nine away, then you're gonna move up 10, you get those megadobs out. You time this with your walk turn, therefore they're fully taking advantage of this. Or the other unit that you can do it with is the, um, I'm trying to say, uh, 20 boys with a war boss and a pain boy. Um, getting, you know, just the faster, and you're doing that exact same play. Either one of those uh, would be a really good way to start off the core of your list. And this is your playmaker. This is not, not so much your playmaker. This is your ender. This is the where you're going to win the game by setting this unit up while everyone else is taking advantage of all the chaos that you're trying to make. Right. Another uh, another good kind of combo. We have to check the numbers on it, if you will. But you take those mega knobs and you take this new Big Mac. Mm -hmm. Right, the Big Mac that gives like pseudo fly to that unit. The big problem with that is being able to use that to get far enough past. If you're right. rapid ingressing nine out, moving outside of an engagement range, disembarking and yeeting all of those boys from there, that's one of the few ways you're actually going to be able to take we'll advantage, advantage of that of that pseudo fly trip. Yep. Right. Um, short of that, I, I think that 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 model isn't necessarily always the best option, but moving him into some synergy like that, you might find some, yeah. some decent value. I think the really what it comes down to it is the next real, I think, the ever core of your list would be a bigger squad of bikes with a death kill war trike. Taking the enhancement that is called Wise Blaster, which allows you after you shoot, you just move six. Right. I've been the ever highlight, I think the really highlighted strategy that is consistently being used. That's not just opportunity cost, but it's also a making awkward place and making those chaotic board states that I'm talking about. Mm -hmm for taking advantage of all these opportunities where everything else can shine, is more gets over here, uh, where it's just a phantasm practically where your unit moves within nine of speed freaks and you get to move six. So you get to move up and say you're within 18, you know, you're at nine inches, let's say, with a uh, unit of bikes with a war trike. They shoot all their guns, they get their benefits and they're within nine. Um, then they're gonna move six, and all of a sudden they're from nine to 15 away. That unit can then move up and try to chase you, and then you're like, I get to pop this ability, move number six back. Right. Yeah, I mean, we're telling you, you take the risky nine inch charge, or if you're trying to go up anything, I'm gonna pop the CP, and you're just not engaging me, probably. Sure. Um, you know, another another kind of value for that is like, that's you know kind of janky and uh, trying to be non interactive, trying mm -hmm. to stay away. But you can also flip it on its head and say, I'm gonna eat all of these bikers out. We're gonna shoot. We're gonna move and get even closer. And then as soon as the opponent moves around, you move again and wrap and kind of create. Yep. Now they're, you're restricting their movement. You're forcing a target mm -hmm. they have to deal with. Again, all the while developing yep. a board state behind. While developing a board state, that's where like that unit allows you to get that board control and sometimes push into your opponent, pull them back to set up the rapid ingress. Yeah. Um, for that big, faster than use enhancement use. Yeah. Um, and I know everybody's thinking, oh, you do that, well, they're gonna die. Well, guess what? Orcs come to the field to die. That is our job. <laughs> it's just our job to do it at the right time. Yep. So, um, but yeah, we've got Blitzifier, Dacastorm, kind of opposite ends of the spectrum for stratagems. Uh, one can get you sustained, sustained one or sustained two. The other one, uh, the other one's gonna convert to lethal hits for you. So there's yep. some good tech in there, but you really want to be within nine to get the, the most up involved. For biker units is really good with speediest freaks. Yes. Um, but sometimes, honestly, with a lot of orc units, even four up involves is not good enough to protect you from mass hardcore fire. I think you, you select that stratagem when you're taking a mid amount of damage to really increase the extra ability there. But if your opponent's looking at you with their entire army, don't pop it. Just let the unit die. Uh, it's not worth the CP because they're going to push for that four pin vault already. Most of the time, people are planning on having some type of way to push for a four pin vault. Absolutely, and uh, you know where where me and you see things different. I like. I like the Def Copters a lot. Um, again, a flavor pick more than uh, a high tech pick. But being able to rapid ingress uh, Def Copters and being able to, to potentially get them to move, get them sustained too on their rockets, get yeah. you know, then they be they become a piece that's a. Uh, it might do well in a, a situational situation where it could be a, a, a clincher game, mm -hmm. right? It could really be very strong if those dice play along with you. But that's a that's a conversion game we all play. Yep. So, but that's Cult of Speed in a nutshell. Next.
Uh, Dreadmob has got really wacky rules on it. It's a grot-based attachment, effectively. Right? Mm -hmm. You get benefits for Gretchen. Your Gretchen become battle line. Right? So you can get 120 Gretchen on the table. You can get, you know, what's that? 12 Runt Herders on the table. Yep. But you can only get one Zod Grunt. Well, only one Zod Grunt. So going with this attachment, first off the bat, I think this attachment has the most broken potential of all the codex. I think this build, as we figured out, has a lot of abilities to be able to handle the mirror map. It has a lot of things to be able to just be really ignorant of our people because it has a melee, melee element, but you need to F1 build into builds. This is one of the hardest lists to scrap and both theory, execution, and um, just in list building and composition and your ratios in your army. Uh, because it's really easy to go over the top with some stuff and really lack and everyone's get punished, or it's too easy to like not bring enough damage and bring a little too much stuff and it doesn't do anything. Uh, because you're really trying to utilize your stratagems because this detachment is so CP hungry, and you really be able to know when you need to pop your CP. You need to be able to plan turns in advance, um, with lining up your shots and realizing that you're an aggressive shooting army that has a great defense in the fact that you're still orcs which means you have a massive amount of melee threats. So let's talk about what the detachment does in a nutshell right up front. Yep. You gain the ability to press a button. Boom! Right? And that button you press is gonna give you one of three options, right? It's gonna give you advanced AP, right? Uh, minus two, an additional two yep. on your AP. Uh, on critical ones. On critical ones. Yeah, <laughs> if it was plus that's, two AP all the time. Uh, that's, that, that's fair, <laughs> right? Um, what else is it giving us? So you're getting lethal hits, uh, critical, all right, lethal hits, Sustained hit one and extra AP on critical wounds. Uh, you get to either roll one of those, or and, or you can pick one and your weapon gain hazardous. That's right. Every time you do press the button and choose get abilities, all these stratagems have for the most part extra abilities stacked on top of it if you pop the, or if you push the button. Uh, so that's take to note because if you do push the button and you use one of the stratagems, your weapons gain hazardous is um, again a second time. And like that doesn't affect anything. The rule down below for press the button says if you already have hazardous, when you press it and you gain it from this rule, you instead hazardous on ones and twos. Right. So the potential to hurt yourself is really quite high. At a at a potential at cost. A potential cost. But you know, as a chaos space screen player, also I'm down for the cost. I have no problems doing so in Team Mortal Wounds myself in my turn. Uh, I've done this before. I'm broken in. <laughs> so I'm going to have you, of course, take the lead on this because we got uh, we have a, a game yesterday with the Dread Mob. Of course, you can go back and check that out on the channel uh, where uh, Perry has executed this list and really been able to kind of show you a lot of the inner workings. Um, what are some of the, the big takeaways from the enhancements? What do, you, what do you think it shines the best? So and for enhancements, really, for me, the ignore cover is the big one, I think. Sure. The press it faster where you get two abilities, I don't think it's worth the uh, points, really, at the moment. And to be honest, like I just don't care much for any of these extra ones. Like The super glowy thing is cool, but like it's inconsistent, not plan on using it. Really, just ignore cover. Uh, this is definitely one of the ones I see out of all the enhancements compared to the rest of that book. This is definitely the enhancements where I'm like, I don't care about them. I prefer to take more units because the main one of the big things with the statue is, like you said, rot battle line. Mm -hmm. um, and to me, I'm not taking the max 120. I'm taking one big 20 man for Zograd Wartsnagel, which we're going to talk more about him in this army once we get the stratagems. Oh, yeah. And then uh, having four or five two man straight, up, saying, straight across the board for screening. This is an orc army that's very good at saying, I'm going to push into you. But I have this backfield screened up where I can even stop a lot of free and deep strikers if I set my models up correctly. hundred percent. And you've got so much of that in the game mm -hmm. right now. So many units that can just disrespect that nine inch yep. and come in from reserves and really disrupt to have the number of bodies to logically uh, screen that entire area yep. with physical bodies uh, is something that not a lot of armies can mm -hmm. produce. And that's one of the reasons why I think you're taking probably typically 50 to 60 Christian at minimum. Uh, I think I'm probably going to find more long term. I'm going to end up just taking 70. I'm taking 10, like 5 man. Dressing. Yeah, 10, 10 man. Or uh, bad, bad, bad. 5, 10 <laughs> mans with the runners. And then a 20 man for Zagrod. Um, but really, for this attachment, when it comes down to the strengths, is the push it faster is not just shooting, it's also melee. Right. So you're able to take, you know, cans are obviously one of the big winners out of this attachment. Everyone's all about them since the Grot King Scott Caboose. Um, but there is a big problem with cans. This is coming from, you know, my experience of playing with this type of army 
for on lining up and managing your footprint from a orc shooting force is it's really easy to oversaturate your front line with too much stuff and your opponent can start picking off at flanks and weird angles where they can kill that stuff and the rest of your stuff can't get over there hyper focused on an alley uh in that firing lane so you need to make sure that your footprints on the front line not too thick right uh with the game of yesterday what you saw is i, I have a large amount of msu stuff i have flash gets even there because they're 80 points they're skirmish they got choppers and melee the knob stats um with choppers and there's just very a uh, useful infantry unit uh that has a screening potential it chips away over uh screen units it can chip wounds off of big units it can body block it can do actions and it's very flexible top that with the gretchen it supports aggression sometimes when you get in these skirmish fights you can just push gretchen up splash gets behind them and gretchen are stopping them from getting charged and the flash gets are just allowed to duck really take advantage of the fact that they're cheap and they are tubing models and they can kill over from units. Again, uh, 80 points for 80 points is very good. bodies on yeah. the table. Yeah. And uh, yeah. I was talking about the flash for that one, but yeah, yeah. like 20, you know, 80 points for 22 bodies is massive mm -hmm. for those Gretchen. And you could take more, but I do think you need retaliation, uh, be able to support your Gretchen advancing and screening. And Flash gets help with that. And then the other unit that's really good in this attachment vets uh, should be rapid ingress users. They apply pressure. And yes, our uh, yesterday's game, which I don't know when the city is going up, but you should go watch it. It's back there. What are you doing? Do your mm -hmm. homework. Mm -hmm. um, showing off how those death threads work with rapid ingressing and moving up because I take triple scorches. Right. And the triple scorches go really well with the stratagems. You're doing casual random battle shocks. Eh, that's all right. Uh, but they, Death Threads got a big boost this, in this Codex. Like, they're strength 12 now. They were strength 10 beforehand, a really awkward number there, but strength 12 is winning all the T6 on twos. Um, it's when the wall is up, they're running T12 on freeze, uh, and there are a lot of extra free damage stuff. Uh, they are a little expensive. I wish they were like 120, 115, maybe 110. Um, and, uh, but they still do a role that no one else does because they have great tank shock, uh, with the stratagems, which getting into this, this affects Gorkonauts, Death Dreads, and Killicans. I think Killicans are pretty obvious themselves, uh, but Death Dreads are the ones that probably need to be talked about a little bit more to understand the fact that they're great outflankers and great skirmishers that just win fights. Well, and you brought up the Scorcher. I mean, I, the, when you're talking about D6 shots, yep. right, you're talking about Torrent, so we're auto-hitting, mm -hmm. and we've got AP on them. Yep, right? and, and more cover. That's uh and ignore cover, yep. right? So that there, there's a lot of value in that to get around our hitting on fives yep. uh, into the death guard matchup with the minus one, maybe minus two. Well, you know, torrent weapons don't care about that, yeah. right? So yeah. being able to have those things. Have that, that overwatch can, threats, have mm -hmm. all that potential uh, for just plays that make your opponent sink. You're, you're giving your opponent a lot of decisions. Right. A good way to make 40K is that, or play 40K, is say, hey, look, I'm making less decisions and I'm moving up, and my opponent has to make more decisions. Right. That's a good way to force a 40k game to progress because then your opponent has more chances to make failure decisions. And as soon as you're able to start dictating those decisions that your opponent has to make, right? Yep. You put them in a situation where they've got one thing to do uh, that they, they must do. Well, you've actually got that data before they do, mm -hmm. right? If you've pushed them there, then you can already be planning your contingency or yep. your strategy for once they get there, what's that next move? And you yep. engage that chess mindset and that, that Staying it's the, the game bed. inside the game. And mm -hmm. if you want to see more about the game inside the game, comment, like, subscribe, talk about it, talk about it. Say, I want to hear more about the game inside the game, and maybe we can do a little series on that. Hmm. Yeah, it's a theory that. that I've been developing for most of my life. <laughs> yeah, we'd love that. And, uh, you know, when you have uh, such a valuable resource, such as this giant teddy bear right uh, here, yeah. you guys got to soak it up. Yep. You know, you better believe that we are. Right? <laughs> you better believe that we are. <laughs> um, but going with these stratagems, Another reason that threads are good, plus one damage is four damage in melee. That's also for the cans. Great strat plus two strength. Um, right. Wow. And uh, it's a, you know, this is, all these strats are one CP and they're just amazing. You want to pop all of them at the same time, but you ain't got the CP for that. <laughs> so learning to manage these are the easy things because you could overwhelm yourself. Luckily, you should have plenty of grot farms out there. Grot farming. Potentially generating you that And CP you have so many well. units, you're taking tactical, so you're generating extra CP. I was really wanting to do fix on this list. I'm a fix man myself when it comes to playing orcs. I don't like playing tactical because I think like, maybe I don't wonder if that's an orc thing. I mean, because I'm the same way. Like you know, I, it's a whole other video for yeah. my opinion on <laughs> tactical uh, missions. Um, but no, definitely. But I think the, the biggest thing to in here is 
you know, that plus one damage. And then you have a great opportunity strat uh, that is, gives your weapons for a walker, uh, assault, and reroll of angels. When you call that with the wall like that, wow. you could take Gorkonok, Morkonok, Killicans, they just go all over the place. They're really hard to deal with. Um, and then uh, bigger shells for bigger gets uh, is the plus one to wound if you're a monster or vehicle. The most important part is plus one damage generically. So I want to talk about the Death Dread with triple Scorches. Uh, all of a sudden they go from Shaft Killers to Light Marine Killers. Because mm -hmm. it's 3d6 at Strength 5, AP1, Ignore Cover, Damage 2. You always roll for the button, because if you roll a Critical Wound uh, for plus 2 AP, it's great. That's a bonus effect that you may you get one of the times. Um, and effectively having three phases of damage out. Yeah. You have your shooting phase with yep. the torrent weapons. You have your tank shock to get mortals out on the charge phase. And then you've got those big weapons to actually do some damage mm -hmm. when you're actually in combat. Yep. And allows you to pick up a lot of bodies that just don't um, don't think they're going to get picked up by a random death dread. Right. Um, and then Daka Daka is pretty crazy. Uh, this is probably the most wacky strategy of all because it's just full reroll hits. Reroll ones, but if you press the button, it's full reroll hits. And this is where the potential comes from a lot of stuff. This is where you see the game with the Gorkonaut, where you pop this to plus one damage, and the Gorkonaut just turns into a blitz machine. Like, he did, like, I made talk about that on the game. When you watch it, like, I'm like, I know it's the wrong decision to go into Death Crowd, but I just want to see if he can push through them with just five guns that have plus one damage and full real hits and sustain. Right. And you know what? He did. And I'm like, cool. And, you know, like, when you see that you can just sometimes when you get in that situation where I can do this, most of the time, it's best to go prey on uh, marine bodies to light vehicles to stuff that's easy to kill. For me, for orc shooting, um, a good way to pass this thing is don't go after powerful bricks first. And this will all orcs, be honest, even their melee. Pick off everything else, and then your whole army collapses on the big, scary stuff at once. And then they just can't deal with it. Yep, threat overload. Yep, so, so secure the board by taking away everyone else's board control. Um, and then uh, when we talk about Wart Snaga and his 20 Gretchen. So he's giving me out now. We've already kind of touched on that, what he generically gives for the unit. Is the cunning runs. Uh, this stratagem allows you to make a normal move mm -hmm. of up to six inches, or not, to, not just a normal move, uh, actually. Not up to six inches. That's the key part here. And uh, if your enemy unit moves within nine of a grot unit, and on a four, they take D6, or D3 plus one more wounds. That's that, right. that didn't even need that. Why, why do we have this? It's awesome. a spore mine. Yeah, it's a Gretchen is a spore mine. Yep. Right? And an extra sixes move is great for any Gretchen unit when you're trying to get people trying to tag him down with melee armies and screens. Sure. But Warg Snaga in the wall turn gives his Gretchen plus six inch move. Right. Like, you gonna move 12 inches. You move over nine, I move 12. And you're just like, what is that? And again, what it becomes is? that same exchange where we can play, we can play keep away and mm -hmm. we can just avoid or. 20 bodies going, yep. wrapping a unit that you have to kill Gretchen before you it, can do anything. It's else real you good for forcing do. emergency dismarcations, or sometimes even Rap they can't even get, mm -hmm. get, you know, there's wrap and trap plays. Uh, Wart Snaga himself also is strength 7, AP 2, 2 damage. And he gets plus 1 to wound and plus 1 to hit. So he's pretty much always sitting on 2 for the most part. Yeah. Uh, and then plus 1 to wound just means that, you know, he's winning so much stuff like you're on 4s or 2s. And he's hard to dig out of that squad because he has a random field of pain. He's just awkward to put down. He adds so much potential to that unit. Another big, uh, a big takeaway in the stratagems here, I think one of them that's going to be just about every game you're going to use it, yep. is that extra governance. And that's yep. going to take some of the things like your, your cans, for example. You have a cans. big unit of cans, and people are dumping three damage into them. Being able to knock a damage profile uh, yep. down to two, you know, you're gaining extra bodies yep. effectively at that rate. Shots that would have killed, now you're able to absorb and soak and get you know twice yep. the shot volume. And this goes perfectly with the death dreads again. The death dreads are utilizing all these strats really effectively mm -hmm. with that 160 mil footprint. Managing your footprint in this army is really important in your screens. That's why I don't want to take too many cans. I'm a six to nine can at max for me. Uh, but death dreads, they come on 160 mil, they're a lot easier to manage. They bleed less, bring it down uh, because it's one unit. They got that two-up base save, and you can pop that minus one damage on them. And also, a lot of stuff just cannot hurt them the way that they want to. Right. Um, with that two-up armor save, that means like AP2 power fists are coming in, doing one damage. A lot of two damage melee units are just not getting through basic death threats. And the basic death threats just smack them back, and it allows every channel to focus on them. Also, you have this extra little resource floating around with your opponent. Like, I hate to have to go try to kill this, but I have to waste the resource 
or a stratagem grenade on a one wound, two wound guy, and it feels really bad. This army is really good about getting in that spot where you have a whole bunch of stuff of surviving small elements, and your opponent's like, I can't deal with all these little practically hero grots, hero dreads, a hero can, and so forth. Yeah, so oh. Dread Mob's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah. It's going to have a lot of play, uh, but I mean, the, the, the theme or the trend continues. Yep. You're going to have Dread Mob stuff in here, yep. but you are going to need Toolbox stuff to yep. support it. I think one unit to really talk about for this one, two last units, you know, Smash Guns, Met Guns are great. Bubble Checkers have a lot of play that need to be tested. I think they'll figure out, figure out if they're worth it. But to me, a unit that's really been probably like, arguably like even the worst Unit in the codex, definitely top three worst, was Ludus. And this detachment makes Ludus work because you can add a shock attack gun to him, give him mech, and it fixes one of those things that gives him sustained hits. And if they're targeting someone on objectives, with a shock attack gun and five Ludus is 125 points. That's a really cheap package. Right. It has long range that you don't see in this edition as much. You don't see, like back when we had played on a full four by six board, a lot more open terrain, you know, longer ranges really mattered a lot more, and you don't see armies sometimes preparing for that down some of these avenues where you're like, I can just tag you all the way across the board. And the Ludas with sustained hits and full rerolls means that every time they hit, you know, every six on average between you know 12 dice that they're within 24, it's going to probably end up being six hits at least. Um, with just three sixes out of you know 12 dice rerolling twice, so you're practically 24 dice you're rolling, or more like 22. Um, and then the shock attack gun is getting full reroll hits. And that gun uh, for dropping random stuff, nonstop damage, you can put that unit on, a, like I said, a far back position, 125 points. It screams out, it has Gretch in here, has Gretch in there, supporting it out, and it's just shooting down avenues and chipping wounds and doing a lot of damage across five turns. Uh, and if your opponent forces, you know, they really extend to go get it, then they're probably ignoring other parts of your army because you can put it behind. Um, those kill cans, those death dreads that can rapid ingress if they go after them early game, those death dreads can come over and support them. Uh, really, death dread, I think Dreadmob wants a heavy reserve of mechanics. Look at that game, and I think that's the base play and the base idea I think death dreads can go. Put a lot of salt in that one. I've played a lot of heavy orc shooting aggressive gun lines, and um, after a couple years of doing it, like this is just where my instincts tell me like this is their correct direction. Right now to go. You know, choices could change back and forth, but I think that's a good rough draft to go with right now if you're looking for a way to play Dread Mob and a build because I think everyone's like, this is potential, and they can't figure it out. Everyone's like, I just don't know. I have to wait and see what that army does. And no one wants to try to figure it out uh, at the moment on the more meta and the wider stream from what I've seen coming from higher end players and players that are just very, you know, um, they have a lot more like talking and chats, a lot of random chats that I'm seeing about like, See, but I don't. I, the, the builds look rough. They don't have, they don't have the direction. This is a good way for a direction if you're looking for it. Uh, and you know, not to mention the fact that this does make a, a nice little home for that big old stomp of to come to <laughs> yep. the table. Yep. Is it going to be a hyper competitive pick? Uh, probably not. Right? Well, you don't win some games, you pro. <laughs> but if you're not afraid to potentially kill yourself on turn one double dosing that stompa with sustained and criticals or sustained and lethals uh rather um could be pretty scary Help. it could be pretty scary it could be at the very least the uh, very least should be a lot of fun so there's a uh, there's red mom that's red mom next okay so green tide next attachment up here this is about overwhelming your opponent with just bodies bodies specifically and bodies Specifically, boys. I was a little disappointed. Storm boys didn't make the cut. Beast Naga boys didn't make the cut. Burn the boys. Burn the boys. They say boys. Let me attach somebody. Let's get to work. But no, this is just your traditional, just hold run of the mill boy. But this detachment is going to elevate them into being more than just your run of the mill boy. The the big takeaways from this mob mentality here. Um, basically, you are getting uh, five up invul. For all boys. For all boys. Um, Big deal because it means you can save your wall for the durability. You do not mm -hmm. need the wall at all for durability outside of units that are not boys. But when you're this list, you're taking a lot of boys. So like, you're not going to have a, a, extra trash to play around with you. If you this has the list has the potential to be the most skewed of all lists. This is a right. list that will gatekeep. This is a list that will say, "Hey, look, if I show up to this event, uh, <laughs> I don't want to play against this because I'm like I just don't know how to deal with it. Don't right? have the volume, right?" 
because it's definitely something that no one right now really is building with the tools because you don't have to worry about this type of threat. So this is the most potential to really skew with those stats um, for certain things when it comes to win rates to uh, specific faction win rates if it comes out and doves. If it comes out as a tide, it, it can be awkward. It's definitely going to shift and make people take different tools. That's right. So that's five of invul across yep. all your boys' units. That's if you have 10 or more models, you're also re-rolling ones. ones. And that's going to be big. We'll talk about that. So we'll yeah, the key thing about that right now is that's not that's all armies, are all units in your army, mm -hmm. not just boys for the real ones. Correct. So there's some silly stuff right now. We're going to have to see as they adjust. Like maybe Mega Knobs, like when they have an enhancement and leading off with the enhancements. You got it. Well, we can let's we'll just jump into that. Yeah. The the raucous war, war caller, caller. Right. You put that on a Mega Boss. Now in cover, these guys have a two up save, rerolling once. Yep. Right. Uh, you know, still gonna fall victim to uh, dev dev wounds, mortal wounds. Right. Yep. But if you're slinging any other fire at him, man, it's gonna yep. be really tough to ship. You put a you put a Big Mac right in there with a you know custom force field for those mega knobs, and they get a re res models. Maybe a real awkward deal. Do I see guys see this unit probably sticking around? Probably not. GW doesn't like two up real ones. They have consistently across the years tried to minimize that or remove them. Um, so all right, I think they've been removed for this position until now. So I don't think this uh, will ultimately make it. But for this next quarter. It looks like it's probably going to be live until that right. big update again. Uh, and I agree. Uh, so we've got, you know, Ferocious Show Off is just going to, like, take a war boss and augment his attacks a bit, make yep. him a little bit more killy. Uh, brutal but cunning, you know, is a chance at a CP, and I'm not a big fan of a chance at a CP uh, for good points. I think that's one you take, basically, if you've got a few extra points left over. Yeah. Uh, and then, of course, Bloodthirsty Belligerence. That's the one that's going to allow you to reroll your advance mm -hmm. rolls, and if you have more than 10 models. You reroll charges. Then you reroll charges. And the big well. thing for the charge that synergizes well so well, so there's a stratagem called something, something, tide of muscle? Yep, where you get uh, extra charge benefits equal to the battle rounds. Right. So, like, you could take a weird void to jump them up there. Pretty self-explanatory. With that enhancement, I see it's probably an auto-include. I think that one's the auto-include and the other enhancement where you're adding. Show-off is nice and brutal but cunning. You know, maybe you take brutal but cunning if you can. If it fits in, you have a freebie. Um, but I think I think Belligerence is probably the best route. I think so. Take. Yeah, Belligerence on a, war, on a weird boy. Yep. Uh, turn three execute him get him to the other side of the table he's getting his re-rolls to those charges he's getting the pluses to the charge for yep. the battle round you know dropping 20 boys maybe even a war boss attached to him as well on top of your opponent on turn three with a six inch charge coming from from nine inch away from effectively yep. reserves evan that's There's definitely where show off synergizes with that because you get to teleport that show off mm -hmm. with that enhancement and also that war boss hits extra hard right and torpedoes it again we talk about a blade of wounds you got 20 boys that are going to stick around for a minute that yep. war boss is pumping out what probably eight or nine attacks yeah well come you on know, mm -hmm. uh, it, it, it's not going to win you games, but it can definitely be one of those tools in the bag that help you win that game yep. for sure. Uh, overall, a lot of fun stratagems here. Yep. You're not going to see this on the table as much, yep. right? I think that I think that one of the barriers to entry for this list is having access to all of the <laughs> models that it's going to take. It takes a very special orc player to just have 120 boys sitting around, plus all the fixins, plus all the war bosses and weird boys and and things that you need in redundancy. Um, but I definitely think that it's going to be, uh, like you said, it's going to be a, a, a very, very valuable gatekeeper army. Gatekeeper. It's also mm. good for teams when you just want something that's really dumb and ignorant, but you don't, you could just bully people. Uh, don't be scared to fight. You have to be able to fight it. Taking a little extra cool to help with, with orcs as a whole, because orcs do have a lot of bodies even outside of that thing. Right. Have a game plan for it. At least understand what you need to do. Yeah. Don't just go into it with no ideas. You're like, oh. <laughs> um, and then, of course, our last attachment was basically made for this guy right here. Yeah. It was basically just just custom crafted yep. to be a more compared attachment. And that's Bully Boys. That's Bully Boys. Bully Boys with the double wall, we all know it's going to be dumb. We all know Mega Knobs are done with that 4 feeling of pain. We all, just getting it twice and getting it set up super big. Uh, knobs are very good in this unit. I don't think knobs are mandatory. I think there's a lot of different ways you can direct and build this list. I think you have that straight extra pressure and going builds where they're just trying to close the distance and end the game as soon as possible. And I think there's some bully boy units where it's a lot of setup. 
where you just confirm wins more often because you're getting a lot on trying to go for turn two, turn three walls or turn three, turn four walls and really make sure that you control that bottom half of the game or middle of the game, which I think are really more often than not the crucial turns for winning a game is in those spots. Right. Um, and with that double wall, the thing is with this attachment is... And that's got, that, that is gifted to... Um, the people with the war boss, war boss keyword, keyword, people with the knob keyword, mm -hmm. and then mega knobs, which um, you know falls into the knob basically. There, there's a few things that can go with this drought. When there, I think there's going to be more potential out of this build of not just going straight over the top, just, mega knobbing you out. Right. There's not just hammers, um, right? Yeah, I've been working on some golf, and I talked about it, I think it's early in the video where I have this kind of golf box, bully box, utility door. I take a lot of units that are not center guys over the section, but they're just good data sheets to have. Allows me to set up my mega knobs. And my boys with war bosses in a better position. Yeah. Uh, I think um, when it comes down to it, commandos have a great thing in here. Death dreads have a great thing in there, and burna boys. That's what I'm really liking as my extra tech in there to allow me to set up those board states uh, and skirmish with those units where I don't need knobs. Um, where knobs do one thing, they crump, and both mecha knobs and knobs do that only. And being limited to that one phase of damage and that one type of game plan. I mean that certain armies can really just control you with basic screens, um, running away from you, and just being a little bit tad faster, and you're not having any guns to deal with them. So that's why I like having all those torrent weapons built in my army. Right. Uh, rapid ingressing the death dreads. I'm putting battle wagons. One of my favorite packages is to put mega boss, five mega knobs, and a battle wagon, and then you have ten miles left. Ten miles is good, but also a little awkward. What's the best ten miles I can do? I like two five man burner boy squads because they're great support and it's very easy to get that ability. As I play with them more and more, I like this unit um, at extra more. It, it does my actions, our screens, our burned random things. 100%. Um, and although it's just limited to war bosses, you yep. know, to knobs and to mega knobs, you know, a lot of uh, your beast boss has the war boss mm -hmm. keyword. Yep. Uh, of course, war the mega boss, the death killer war trike. And what that means is we're going to get the bully boy bonus on, on war bikers if they're yep. attached to the death killer, yep. on squig hogs if they're attached to the beast boss. So on paper, when you first read it, the knee jerk is how many mega knobs, how many knobs can I fit in this yep. attachment? But you're going to you're going to find yourself with a very one dimensional build that's either going to go convert and win or not convert and mm -hmm. you lose. And you can watch that on a game that's before this video. Go click. It's Watch almost it. as if there's a shameless plug afoot. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely um, check that game out. Uh, uh, Mark does a really good job of demonstrating um, all the synergies that exist outside of the obvious, yeah. right? Uh, definitely, definitely worth a watch. So what's one of some of the, the shining moments from our bully boys here? So the top relic of all time is Teleporter. It goes on Mega Armor World Boss, gives him him and his unit Deep Strike. So good. Massive for Rapid Ingress. You're always going to have this in a Mega Knob unit for Rapid Ingress places. It gives that flexibility, that pressure. Um, and it's always going to pressure early. It's not, yep. it, you're not going to have it just sitting in reserves waiting mm -hmm. for action. You're putting a CP in the bank, making sure that when that opportunity first arises, that those models are coming down other side of the ruin, can't be shot at. Yep. I dare you to charge me. And if you don't, well, I'm just going to step over. into combat. Yeah, my turn. I think the next for like really kind of the extra ones is I really, prefer, really like Ed Stompa. That real one's the wound when you're in the units below. Starting strength is really nice. The real only full wounds um, is when they're below half strength. Not as much, it doesn't happen as consistently. Mm. But so that's where actually having an extra shooting where you're like, oh, like, hey, look, I threw a grenade. Uh, I, I scorched you, I burned you. Battle wagon to the wound wall, it's massive shooters. Uh, allows that mega one war boss to do a little extra damage on his, right. not, since his weapons aren't from links. Um, I see that's the second one up to me. Adding plus two to the wounds for 10 points is a great enhancement. I haven't figured out if I need it all the time. If I have the 10 points, I play with it, but I don't build with it. And then Big Gob, I feel like Big Gob has some potential. Since our, like, the minus one to, you know, Battle Shock, take a Battle Shock at minus one, uh, is actually more impactful than you think it should be because a lot of people have Final Death Stratagems, Warmer Contempt, Contempt, lots right. of random things. This, is available. this has the ability to take that away. They fail it. And I've thought about in this list when I saw about how Death Dreads and like this is where it goes with the goth box uh, utility builds that I like to think of. Like I've thought about taking a random weird or were boy to say minus two to your battle shocks. And frazzled. And then you have minus three to this battle shock and you can take two Death Dreads and go in there too and just take three battle shocks. I don't have to worry about interrupt. I don't got to worry about armor contempt. I ain't got to worry about fighting death. 
uh, or fight first for me and those things like I have it has this utility so I see there's potential there but I mean, that's something that you're gonna uh, you just have to play with and see if you can learn how to get that set up for it it's not worth chasing after if you can't make it work naturally and don't feel like you're uh, working around too much. Kelly Porter and Ed Sampa is going to make it your way into saying, almost every open. list, right? The, they are going to be clutch. The other ones are going to be very situational depending on your build. And again, I think it's going to come down to, do I have the extra points, yeah. right? Is there is there enough of a gap that I can't put in a, another unit to fill a role? All right, if not, then, you know, we'll go ahead and yeah. go big gob on this guy. So going off with those strats, those strats are my top two. Uh, really are the uh, Orbs of Teeth, which is a reroll, one's a hit, and if it's a wall, you got re full rerolls for a mega full reroll. Right. All these strats are locked to that only those two days. But, you know, that full rerolls makes everything just so much more consistent. Uh, don't need to explain how good that is. The other one I would say is cut them down. Oh, good. The fallback one is massive. Oh, so good. It doesn't, it works on every day to shoot in the game. Uh, for some reason, it works on vehicles and monsters. I, I don't think it should. But it only gets a argue. lot of games at not yeah. Yeah, I just like so look right the other way. way. <laughs> it says takes a desperate breakout and a minus one uh, if you're on the wall. And the long times you're at minus one. And this allows you to tag in, clock, you know, things that want to run random big stuff. Also, you people have to argue about the in their head. I'm like, do I take the risk that this tank dies? Um, I'm not saying anything. if they feel a battle shock, that's another minus one. Um so I see the stratagem, if you play around and force it, it's the most, those are my top two uh, really setting up. You know, Hunt, Hulking Brutes has armor contempt at range, really big for Mega Knobs, that's uh, easy to feed. The Mortal Wounds uh, are big on to Crushing Impact. Uh, that one's a little harder to use, I think. I don't want to roll it too often because it's locked in Mega Knobs and Knobs only, mm -hmm. and you get to roll a dice per model in engagement range, and the problem with that is these units aren't very big. Mm. They're gonna be able to use a strat. So I I only use it when hey, there are one or two wounds left. I really need to confirm the kill. Right. I want to touch something else. Like I charge two things. I want to kill this with mortal impact because there are one or two wounds left. And go there. And a good way to sometimes do that is I will use a strat, say I throw a grenade, bop. Then I tank shock with death dread or battle wagon. Bop, extra wounds. Okay. They're at one or two wounds, then I'll crushing impact. Right. Oh. And that's an important distinction with crushing impact. When we look at unstoppable momentum from mm -hmm. the B-Snag attachment, that only requires that you have a single model yeah. that makes engagement. And then the number of models that you have in that unit is going to sling mortals. So it has a higher value for the CP spent um, than something like crushing impact here, which you're going to get that wound yep. for the models that you actually have in combat yep. and if you're playing a tight board you've got just one or two things that have closed the gap well you lose a ton of value mm -hmm. on this stratagem for sure yep. um one thing i want to just you know, kind of touch back to cut them down for a moment um cut them down not only gives that 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 danger of hey i fall back and i could potentially I don't know, remove a whole riptide from the table. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, maybe a spoiler alert on last night's Tau versus Billy Boys. Um, but it also presents, also that you're going to see in this game, the ability to take a unit that might not have the ability to convert everything into to pick up the bodies, but put two, three, four units in danger and force that hard decision yep. on your opponent. When it comes down to their turn, that one unit, is giving the option for that fallback strat on every single one of those units, and then like in like a like a, a parent trying to escape like a, you know a shipwreck, you're grabbing your favorite kid and protecting them. <laughs> yep. You know the uh, that 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 C or D student. Well, he might be like looking for his own life vest. Uh, but then also, like, that also like that's what goes with like having those extra uh, utility pieces. I like not just putting yourself into like I only do knobs and mega knobs, and just go unga bunga. Having those utilities where you can punch away those screens consolidates into those said units, open up holes, and tag things that normally weren't planned on getting tagged against a straight aggro army. Being able to clear off a layer or two of screens with melee and um, some shooting uh, allows means that they need to even have more depth layers of screens. Right. Um, so set up for this, and it goes really well with the last strat, what I think is really situational good. It synergizes so well come down, which is two, or two aggro and dies fight on depth. We all know how good that mm -hmm. is is uh what is it always looking for a fight which is d3 plus free consolidation or if it's a wall it's flat six right you just get to tag a lot of stuff at that point and when you're tagging a lot of units your opponent has to make those decisions as they was saying there's a lot of decisions that your opponent has to make and uh you can wait until they do one at a time and they're like okay you haven't done it yet you haven't done that yet 
oh great i have to do this last one now i have to take the risk or i just decide not to do it right you know? or, or i just stay in combat because it's not worth the risk right yep. and then it doesn't even affect your cp economy what you've then engaged is you know kind of psychological warfare mm -hmm. right by just the threat of the loss is going to perfect the way they they execute that strategy. Yep. So there's a lot of a lot of fun jank on that one. I yeah. think I think that's a very very valuable stratagem uh, for the bully boys to test. Yeah. And really, I think that's all I've ever seen from bully boys talking with it. You can go watch that game. Get a rough idea of really uh, high extra pressure builds. So forth. There's one highlight I want to mention for this stage for this detachment that goes really well. Cut them down because I love cut them down. Is the death killer war track with his bikes. Mm -hmm. Uh, they can go 18 inches of charge, so they can just charge all kinds of random nonsense. Uh, nope, they can't use come down. They're not knobs. They're not knobs. Sorry. No, but, but we do bring it back to, you know, this screen, right? <laughs> yeah. We do bring yeah, yeah. it back to, uh, that's a, a high volume of shots, right? It's the ability slow to lanes. penetrate and slow down and create the lanes that you want and then, and then create the opportunities to deliver those knobs, right? Yep. The knobs, it gives the knobs another use rather than just go crump mm -hmm. right now you've got those knobs that you might have in the truck to set up an opportunity to charge into you know a, a target you're not going to kill just to make sure that you're there and the whole purpose of them for that turn might be the execution of that strategy and so having having the speed and the volume of fire that you know those that death killer and those war bikes can present i think that we're going to see Death Killer and War Trike at what's 150 points mm -hmm. for that combo. I think you're going to see that combo in a lot of bits. Yeah, I think so. it has a lot of potential there for pace and so forth. Well, that covers all of our detachments. We, we got through all of those. Um, we're not going to be doing all the data sheet stuff. Oh, there are a couple of big winners from the data sheets. Uh, you've heard as mentioned, of course, Zodgrad. Yep. Uh, DOA in ninth edition, and now our guy might be in just about every competitive yep. list out. You can you can add him into. Amazing in the Dread Mobs. He's a great with Bully Boys too, because when you call that first wall, he has this great opener play mm -hmm. for setting up everything else. Which is a great unit. Um, What's your other big takeaways? Man, like for me, for like units, I love. I already talked about a lot about death threats. I mm -hmm. like them in almost all detachments because I like their stats, I like how they line up with everything. Luda's back on Luda's, the menu. Luda's, Luda's mm -hmm. on for Dread Mob. It opens up a lot of things. I think commandos have a lot of play. I think everyone needs to be taking at least one commando unit. Snake Rod is a big face up. I he's a loan op. He's amazing. Snake Rod is um, one of the most we got Commandos. Let me just jump yeah. in here on that. Like commandos didn't change. The points the points are still the same. Yep. It's still a ten man unit. You know, you've you've still got all of the aspects that went with it before that really knocked us off in the index. But the synergies that they bring with the units that are now in here. Right. With those detachment rules. They are very, very good. Yeah. And, and I'm just Snake Rock alone. Cause Snake Rock is a 40 mil base. He doesn't mm -hmm. take up a whole bunch of space on the board. Mm -hmm. Well, these attachments, they have scout moves. We want rapid ingressors. We want that board control. 10 dudes can take up a ruin and really push out a bubble. Where like, I have some base of board control over there. You probably don't want to go over there. You can't right. put your own infiltrators, your own deep strikers over there. And um, I like the utility where the 5 of them is really big. They're really noxious with 5 of them once per game from the uh, distraction grot. And they got stealth. So, like, I found when I was playing with them a lot, they're getting a lot more use of their opponents are awkward, they're hard to deal with, random burn a boy in there for an extra flamer, for dealing with trap units that normally, um, that you wouldn't kill, like, basic distraction squads, taking wounds off of random Eldar Rangers, uh, and so forth. There's That unit is very, very useful. Uh, I think everyone should probably be playing with one because Infiltrate is that big. You That's don't it. have to add Snake Rock. You can put Snake Rock in the back. Um, and just wait his time because he's a loan up. But yeah. Well, and uh, you know, if you have an army that doesn't have any infiltrators, and you play into an army that does have infiltrators, first, you give up a lot of, of of strength and position. Yeah. So, um, those are some great units. Now, let's 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 close this out with some just final predictions on how this book is going to impact the meta. What, what do you think? How do you see that playing out? So, green tide definitely is going to make people have to have tools to not get just disrespectful. Definitely on those higher levels mm -hmm. and the mid tables, I you you'd probably be fine for the most part, um, because I think those people that are going to be pushing it are either just there for a good time, they're not trying to mm -hmm. push themselves, or those high level players are probably going to end up just winning based on the pairings in the entire time. Mega knobs, though, are going to be everywhere. We all know this. You definitely need to bring in higher AP, higher uh, damage stuff. Hell Blasters for Space Marines against uh, against them is very handy of a unit. Definitely, that unit just kind of decrease. Um, that's unit you know, I really, you know, as an orc player, I look at them like this thing is just good at killing basic orcs. It's good at killing wounds off of Mega knobs. 
uh, having that higher AP against Mega Dobbs is really big because like they can just ignore up to AP2, uh, which means they're just taking two ups and bully boys with armor contempts for hulking brutes and hover. Right. So ignore cover, AP2 um, is good. Anything for AP3 or 4, bring up those extra ones there uh, would be really nice because you can't tie, you can also, you can tie them down respectively. If you have lots of basic troops that have like an invuln, um, and maybe are you just show, shove 20, 30 dudes on them, you can bog them down. Right. That's a good way to do it. Or try to bait your opponent to get the walls out early and uh, they don't use their, you know, there's, there's the players not using their wall effectively in the way that they're using it once they're stuck in the fight. The Mega Knobs of Sync, when they're actually taking damage, uh, Mega Knobs are still rev are, are relatively, you know, easy to kill when they're outside of wall. Because that four up feel no pain is amazing. We know how good it is in custodes and so forth mm -hmm. from wardens. But outside of that, the condition is pretty well good, just killing custodes already. And uh, we know how to do that. And so you need to follow those same lines. You got it. Yeah, I think that in many ways, like your engineers out there uh, that can diagnose where the meta is at and what to expect going to events, I think that the orc book itself brings a very good toolbox for them yeah. to determine how to counterplay the meta with one of these attachments. Yep. Uh, and I think that the impact is going to be felt far and wide, preparing for bully boys and, you know, cult of speed and green tide all potentially being at the same event means that if you don't build a list that can have a logical solution for all three, then you've got a boogeyman that mm -hmm. you just got to hope that you you miss. Yep. So that's a that's a lot of depth that it adds to the table. And uh, and I'll tell you, man, I am here for it. If you have any questions or if you have any comments, things that we might have missed or you know fun ideas that you'd like to see checked out, make sure you hit the comments. Uh, let us know kind of what your thoughts are. Uh, share this with other work players. Let's let's get the get the whole war band together to and theory craft this out. Let's make orcs the best army in 40k. I mean, still, I mean, they were never not the yeah. best army in 40k. Let's keep them <laughs> as the best the army best in boys. 40k. You know it. They're the best kids. All right. Well, guys, we will see you on the other side. Bye. <laughs>